In this video, we would see how to set the default permissions for a file or directory in Linux. And also, we would see how to provide the permission to a file or directory to a specific user or group. Here, I have an example directory. Generally, when we create files or directories in Linux, they will come up with default permissions. For example, here I don't have any file. Let me try to create a new file. So I am creating a test.txt file with the default permissions. When we see the permissions with LSI and LRT, the permissions are something like this. You can see the permissions here. So here the permissions are r w dash r dash dash r dash dash. Means it is one one zero one zero zero one zero zero. Means six four four. So we are getting the permissions as six four four for this file as default permission. And also, if I create a directory, let me check the permissions of this directory. Here I am getting the default permissions as seven five five. How these default permissions we are getting? In Linux, we have a command called umask. So umask tells us what are the default permissions for a directory or a file. Let us check the value of umask. So as of now, the umask value is zero zero twenty two. So the default file permissions would be the subtraction of six 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 minus the umask, and we'll get the default directory permissions by subtracting the umask value from seven seven seven. So this way we can get the default permissions. So here uh, we have zero two two. That means the default permission of the directory will be seven 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 minus zero two two means seven five five. Similarly. The file permission will be obtained by subtracting with six six six. That means our default file permission will be six four four. That is why uh, we have got the default permission as six four four of the test dot txt. So this way we can obtain the default permissions. Then how do we try to change the default permissions? So we have to change the umas value uh, for changing the file or directory default permissions. For example, if I put umas as zero zero two. Then we can obtain the umas value again. Okay? So here we can see the zero zero two. If I create a test two file, test two dot txt. So the file permission should be six six four because we have to subtract the triple six. So six six four will be the permissions. Let us verify that. So here we can see the file permissions are six six four. That means r w dash r w dash r dash dash. So in a similar manner, you can obtain the default directory permissions. Let me try to create a new directory. Just here to. So the directory default permission should be seven 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 minus zero zero two. That means seven seven five. So let us verify the permissions now. Now we can see the default directory permissions are seven, seven, and five. So this is how we can obtain the default permissions for a file or a directory in Linux. The value of umask we have given is valid only for this user session. For example, if I open a new session and if I check the umask value, again it will be zero zero two two. That means whatever value we have given earlier was reverted. So to change this umask value permanently for a user session, we can either change the dot file file or dot bash rc file etc. based on the uh, based on the cell we use. So for example, if I change In a bash rc file, so here I can enter the umas value. For example, zero zero two, and let me execute bash now. So now we can see the value of umas as zero 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 two. So this way we can change the value of the umas for a user session. Now the second question is how to provide the permission to a file or a directory to a specific user or group. When we enter ls-lrt command, we can see the permissions on a file or a directory. So, in addition to the file permissions or directory permissions, we can also see the file owner in the corresponding group. Here, the rw dash permissions indicates the owner permissions, and r dash dash indicates the permissions of the group the owner belongs to. And here, other r dash dash indicates the permissions of others. Here, others indicate the users who are not the owner, as well as the users of not this group. 
Now, if you want to change the permissions of others, we have to change these permissions using chmod command. So, for example, if I give chmod 666 h.txt and we can see the permissions of others now. Here now, others have read write others have read write dash means they have read write permissions on the file. So, this way we can change the permissions of others. But, how can we provide the permissions of a particular user or group in others? We cannot provide these selected permissions using chmod command. So, in Linux, there is a concept called access control list. So, using access control list, we can provide selective permissions on the file or directory to a particular user or group. Now, now let us see how can we provide is selective permissions on a file or directory to a particular user. So, here I have some example users. This user one belongs to test group. So, this user 2 belongs to test group, user 3 and this user belongs to test group. Now, let me log into root user. Let me try to create an example file in the temp directory. So, here I have created a testing.txt in the temp directory. Let me check the permissions of this file. So, here the file permissions are 644. Now, since the others having r dash dash means read permission, anyone can see this file. For example, let me log in with user 1. So, you can see the content i. Similarly, let us log into other users. The user 2 also can see the file content. User 3 also can see the file content. Here, the root wants to give write permissions to user 1. Then, he has to mention the file name. Now, we can see the ACLs using get FACL command. Now, from the FACLs, we can see that the user, user1 is having the right permissions on the file temptesting.txt. So, let us log in with user1 and we will try to change the file content. Now the file content is changed. You can see the file content here. Now the file content is hello instead of hi. So now we will exit with user 1 and we will try to log in with user 2. And if he wants to change the content of the file, he cannot do that. Let us try doing that. Now, we can see that he does not have permission. The permission is denied. He cannot change the file because he does not have any write permissions on the file. This way, we can provide the selective permissions on a file or a directory using ACLs. We have to use the set FACL command and we have to modify the ACLs corresponding to a file or a directory. Now, we have seen how to provide a permission on a file or a directory to a specific user in Linux. Similarly, we can provide permissions on files or directories to specific groups as well. So, let us see how to do that. Here, I will create a new directory called test directory. So, the root user having all the read write execute permission, the root group is having read write execute permission, others having read write execute permission. So, now we have uh, three users here.
So if we verify the groups, we have two users. User 1 and user 2 belongs to temp test group. Similarly, user 3 belongs to test group 2. Now, let us try to provide only read permissions to this test group on this test directory. And we do not want to provide any permissions on the directory to test group 2. So how can we do that? So for that, we can provide ACLs on this directory using set FACL command. So before doing that, let us remove this read and execute permissions on this directory to others using chmod command. 750 test directory. So let us verify the permissions now. Now we can see others do not have any permission. So now let us try to provide set FAS here. So we have to provide group now, G. And the group name we have to provide here, we have to provide test group. And the permissions, read and execute permission on the directory. Command indicates we are modifying the ACLs on this directory to provide the read, write, read and execute permissions to the test group. So let us execute this. So now when we see the ACLs on the test directory, we can see that the group test group is having read and execute. And we did not provide any other access to test group 2. That means the user 3 which belongs to test group 2 cannot read this directory. That we can verify. So let me try to log in with test user 2 now. So let me log in with user 2 and verify the read access. Now if you do cd slash temp slash test PIR, we should not get any permission issue. So because the user 2 belongs to test group. Similarly, we can verify for user 1 as well. But I am not doing that. Now let us try to log in with user 3, which belongs to test group 2. Now if we give cd slash temp slash test here, he cannot go into this directory because the user does not have any read permission. Now we can see the user 3 cannot cd into the temp test directory because it does not have any read and execute permission from the directory. So this way we can provide a specific permissions on a file or a directory using set FACL command to particular users or groups. So in this video we have seen two things. One is how to provide the default permissions on files or directory in Linux. And the second one is how to provide permission to a file or a directory to specific users or groups. I hope this video is useful to you. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.